Good morning. I would like to remind everyone to please make sure that all cell phones are turned to the all for vibrate position. Also, please be advised our city council meetings are broadcast on Comcast Channel 99, AT&T Uverse, and the City of Gas and YouTube channel. Uh, this meeting of the Gadsden City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Latham. Present. Councilman Smith. Here. Councilman Avery. Here. Councilman Back. Here. Councilman Wilson. Here. Councilwoman Minatra. Here. And Councilman Robinson. Here. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. I'm going to request Heath Williamson to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings. Uh, we thank you for Jesus, most of all, Father, and the wonderful forgiveness you give us. We pray, Father, that your um, hand remains on us, Father, as we go through the business at hand. I pray for this council, the mayor and his staff, Father, this city and all the workers. Lord, we just pray that you give us wisdom, guidance, knowledge, and discernment to go through everything in accordance with your will, to never resist your will at any time, and to always seek you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and city council meeting held on September 19th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of accounts for the week of September 15th through the 21st. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Agenda item seven is reserved for proclamations and commendations. I see Mayor Ford has some today. Mayor Ford. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. I want to say uh, this is regarding our own gas and fire department. When the storm hit the mountain, uh, I was unaware, uh, but we had a, uh, I don't want to call them a chain gang, uh, but a chainsaw gang uh, <laughs> with the fire department. And they took it upon themselves on their off time to go back up to the mountain and help residents out and cut trees and put them on the side for our public works. And I just thought that was something great that we ought to recognize. And I was unaware of this and I apologize for that, but I want to thank them. And if y'all would start making your way up here, please. Uh, on thir Thursday, August 3rd, the city of Gazan was impacted by a severe storm that left many areas of the city with down power lines and trees, especially the Nakalula Falls area. When a storm of that magnitude affects an area, the cleaning process is ongoing and very strenuous. Two groups of off-duty firefighters donated their time and provided vital services for the success of the cleanup initiative. The first group consisted of Commander John Day, Commander Mike Peake, Cameron Parnell, and Chief Will Reed, who diligently worked in Nakalua Falls area cutting trees and clearing storm debris from homes, driveways, and fences while using chainsaws. The second group consisted of John Day, Commander John Day, Commander Mike Peake, Jonathan Davis, Jake Humphreys, Noah Johnson, Kyle Nelson, and firefighter recruit Tyler Goosby. They received a list of pinpointed areas outside of the Falls area from EMA. They, too, cut down trees and cleared debris from homes, driveways, and fences, with most of the work being done by chains chainsaws as well. We want to commend these firefighters for going above and beyond the call of duty to assist in helping with the storm cleanup. Thank you for your dedication, commitment to the citizen of Gas and Craig Ford Mayor. Thank you very much. No, please. Come on up, take a picture.
Miss Ivan Nelson to please. This is a friend of ours, but also somebody that's been very important in our community. This is Plumber Wholesale. Uh, so if y'all would come forward. <coughs> and the guy standing in the middle, Cole, uh, he's in our fantasy football league, which I, I'm leading the league right now at this time. Just wanted to make that point. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Ivan. Thank you. I have a proclamation here. Whereas Plumbers Wholesale Supply Company was founded in 1948 by George Cummins and L.O. Trout, George, his wife Ellen, and business partner L.O. Trout all came from Evansville, Indiana. Due to the inventory being brought in by rail, they decided to start their business at 2311 Forest Avenue in Gadsden, which was a pivotal location at that time. And whereas shortly after settling here, George and Ellen started a family and welcomed their children, Dave and Ginger. As the children grew, they began working at the family business with Ginger assisting in the office and Dave in the warehouse. Once Dave graduated from the University of Alabama, he moved back home to Gadsden and to help his father run the business in the mid-1970s. And whereas, Plumber's Wholesale quickly became a vital part of Gadsden's growing community and over the years has even provided numerous people with lifelong careers. Ginger got married to Alan Ross after graduating college and Alan became part of the family business in 1976. And whereas, due to the vast growth in the late 1970s, Plumber's Wholesale outgrew their existing location and expanded their warehouse housing space. They also upgraded their counter sales and added their first plumbing fixture showroom in Gadsden. Their new location at 2100 Forest Avenue has since been a staple of the community. And whereas during the last 47 years, Dave and Allen, along with other loyal employees, have provided a great service to their customers and the community. Their hard work and dedication have turned Plumbers Wholesale Supply Company into a household name in Etowah County and the surrounding areas. Now, therefore, Craig Ford, mayor of the city of Gadsden, Alabama, hereby joins with the Gadsden City Council in proclaiming Saturday, September 29th, 2023, as Plumbers Wholesale Supply Company Day in the city of Gadsden and in congratulating them on 75 years of service to Gadsden and surrounding areas. I was hoping maybe Al would come up here and, and say something, considering he's probably been as familiar with the business as anybody has. But, um, you know, we just owe everything to this community, our family, our friends. Um, they've just made made everything work for us, and we hope that we've worked hand-in-hand -hand with the community, and we just we thank you all so much. And thank you, Mayor Ford, and thank you, Council. Thank you. Congratulations. 
Sure. Oh, please. That'll be good. Yeah, just a, just a quick note on Friday. We're going to have a big cookout, um, big celebration. So if anybody's in town wants to come by, say, hey, hang out, have some chicken. Y'all come see us. We'll be excited to see everybody. Thank you. Thank you to our fire department and uh, for the work you did on your own time, uh, volunteering to cut down the trees and do things and clear the land. And thank you to Plumbers Wholesale for investing 75 years in the city of Gadsden. Thank you so much. All right, we'll move to item eight, which is unfinished business. 8A is an ordinance amending city code chapter 74, article three regarding privilege license tax. This ordinance was presented last week for the first reading. It updates the schedule and costs for business licenses issued by the city. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this ordinance. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the ordinance, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> motion carries to adopt. Item 8B is an ordinance adopting fiscal year 2024 budgets. This ordinance was presented last week for the first reading and approves the following budgets. General fund, $60,175,513. Special revenue funds, $8,442,287. Debt service funds, $6,750,331. Enterprise and Internal Service Funds, $15,698,517. Capital Projects Fund, $9,200,000. Capital Projects Fund Two, $8,500,000. The chair um, will entertain a motion to adopt <coughs> this ordinance. Uh, Mr. President, um, an administrative <coughs> adjustment was made to the budget, so I'd like to Propose a substitute to um, ordinance number, well, ordinance 2023-694. The substitute ordinance would be 2023-694.1. Um, the the changes would be um, we're gonna we would be uh, revising the estimated or anticipated income for the city from 60 million 175 thousand 513 dollars up. Um, approximately, what is that, uh, $75,000. So the new uh, anticipated income for the fiscal year 2024 would be $60,250,513. So it's exactly um, $75,000 that we expect in additional <laughs> revenue. Um, simultaneously, this would also amend the uh, general fund budget appropriation from $57,909,399 down to $57,844,399. It would um, amend the general fund appropriation um, from $1,412,500 to $1,552,500. And finally, it would amend the um, Enterprise and Internal S Service Fund budget um, from $15,698,517 to $15,716,165. So in summary, um, this projects an additional $75,000 in revenue um, and projects um, approximately uh, $65,000 in decreases in the general fund budget. All right, thank you. So there's a motion to uh, substitute. Substitute. Uh, there's a second. All right. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to substitute the alternate alternate ordinance, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries for the substitution. We, we have to then vote again on the ordinance. Okay, so now the ordinance has been uh, substituted. substituted, so now uh, we need so to- So I'd lay that on the table and make a motion to, to approve. Okay. Second. There's a second. All right. Uh, Councilman Smith. Okay. Those in favor to adopt the ordinance as substituted, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. 
Item nine on the agenda, this is the time and place as advertised to conduct a public hearing, allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of an ordinance rezoning property located at 1203 Gardner Street from B2 General Business District to R1 One Family Residence District. The owner stated that the property had been rezoned to accommodate a hair salon that has since been located to another area and would like to have the property rezoned for use as residential rental property. The Planning Commission recommended approval with seven voting in favor and one abstention. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this ordinance? Yes, ma'am, if you'll come to the podium and if you'll please give us your name and your address. Ms. Danielle Byers. The address is 1203 Gardner Street. And I just want to uh, come and say thank you for taking the opportunity and the time out to um, allow me to speak and just be able to yeah. come and be able to change everything back over to residential, from commercial to residential. Okay, so Ms. Byers, obviously your your comment is in favor of the. It is. Of, I'm okay. sorry. Oh, that's okay. That that's fine. It's a, yes. I just, I just wanted, wanted to, to just say thank you for, sure. uh, for everything. To, well, thank you. I just wanted to make sure okay. we had that noted in our in our okay. records. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else wish to speak in opposition or in favor of the ordinance? All right, this ordinance has been presented today for the first reading and the council will vote on it next week. Agenda item 10 is a resolution authorizing conveyance of property by Gadsden Airport Authority. The city is a co-sponsor for the Northeast Alabama Regional Airport and this authorizes the conveyance of one acre of property owned by the Gadsden Airport Authority to Prince Metal Stamping USA Incorporated. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So Second. Is there any discussion? This has been going on a year. We've been trying to help Prince Metal, so I hope this will rectify it. It has. I think this started back maybe when, uh, in our last uh, uh, council was in session, so uh, last term. So yeah. it's uh, Prince Metal Stamping is a great corporate partner of the city of Gadsden, so we're certainly glad to Absolutely. have them in uh, Gadsden. Hope this does help the company. All right. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Item 11 is a resolution authorizing agreement with Goodwin Mills K. Wood LLC. This is to complete a downtown district restriping design from Walnut Street to Megan Boulevard and North 1st Street to North 7th Street, and the amount is $24,000. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So Second. Is there any discussion? So, Mr. President, this is uh, something that's been going along with our master plan. And when we met with them, basically uh, they're doing this at cost. Uh, this will help us determine what additional parking spaces can be found by restriping downtown. Uh, it will also uh, create bike trails and walk trails uh, for the public. So this is something that we we're very excited about. I think it's a... It's kind of gotten overshadowed by the budget, but I think it's a very positive thing that we're going to have in downtown, and I'm assuming this will be done with which budget? Uh, it's actually the money we have in the So we have the money in the account today before October 1. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about this. I think everybody will be happy with this once it's complete. That's right. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Ford. Any others? And this will also be, I think, uh, when I went to the, the – owners meeting a downtown owners meeting I think they were talking about actually when they do the restropping they're going to actually get more parking on the side streets mm -hmm. like they won't be parallel anymore it'll be more because I think they can get more spaces in that's there that correct. way and easier the for the parking for the downtown's public. been a problem so we're trying to they did this in another area and created 60 something new parking spaces so we're I mean if we just get half of that we'll take it yeah I think I remember in a meeting that uh, Goodwin, with Goodwin Mills Kwood, they each parking place in a city represents X number of it thousand, sure maybe does. like ten thousand yeah. or something like that. Do we I remember that remember dollar amount? Said, but it does. I think about ten thousand. So if we can add parking <coughs> places, that's just revenue for downtown merchants, and then of course for the city of Gadsden. So, 
Well, right. and <clears throat> not to be the granola eating hippie that I am, but uh, <laughs> I also am really excited and appreciate Goodwin Mills acknowledging the bike lanes and the need for bike paths in downtown. I think the, the closer we can get to this being a pedestrian friendly downtown, the better off we'll be. Sure. Amen. All right. Thank you, Councilman Wilson. All right. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Item 12 is a resolution authorizing acceptance of donation from Kids to Love Foundation and authorizing lease and service agreement with Safe Haven Baby Boxes <laughs> Incorporated. This authorizes acceptance of a donation from Kids to Love Foundation for a Safe Haven Baby Box to be installed at Fire Station Number 3, located at 300 Garden Street, and the amount is $18,000. It also authorizes a lease and service agreement with an initial fee of $12,000 and an annual fee of $300 each year thereafter. The Chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. Second. Is there any discussion? Mr. President, this is something that I want to commend Brett Johnson for bringing to us. Uh, the Alabama legisl legislature passed a bill uh, to allow this to happen. The, the, the Safe Boxes is a company. Uh, there is a donor out of Madison that said they would donate the first 10 boxes. Uh, we raised our hand immediately. Uh, we got the uh, one of the first boxes that were donated to a municipality. We're excited about this. Uh, it'll be at Central Fire Station. Uh, we hope we never have to use it, uh, but if somebody does have a baby and does not want to care for it before they take it to the hospital and it would require some paperwork, uh, and a lot of people were just shamed into doing this, so, you know, I hope, you know, bad things had happened. This will be anonymous when you pull the door open. Uh, it'll sound an alarm in the fire department. They'll go straight to the baby box. It's heating and cooled. So the baby should be uh, secure within the next 15, 20 seconds. And that way the person can uh, leave the infant without being known. And then they'll contact the authorities and hopefully the adoption process will take place. I think it's a wonderful idea and I appreciate Brett being on top of that. I think I read in an in a article that there's something about the state legislature has created a 45 day window from the birth of a child where the birth mother will not be prosecuted uh, in order to that's correct. Encourage yeah. proper uh, handing over of a, of a child if, if the mother feels she can't, in fact, handle that uh, birth of the baby. So uh, I'm, I appreciate the, the coming forward with this, Brett, with having this box. Hopefully it'll, it'll do well, and I agree with Mayor Ford. Hopefully it's never used, but if, it, if it's needed, then I think it'll, it will be glad that we had it. So thank you very much. Any other comments? All right, clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Item 13 is a resolution authorizing lease agreement with Plaza Cotton Storage, LLC. This is for a portion of building T-8A and B at the Air Depot for a term of six months. The rent will be $9,000 per month. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Is there any discussion? So Mr. President, this to give you an update, the Council on the Air Depot buildings, uh, we have sold every building but T8. Uh, the Department of Motor Vehicles, the ALEA, is moving out of the old Kwanzaa hut. Uh, they're moving, I believe, to the county courthouse. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, so we will be taking back over that building. We're trying to determine if we need to tear it down or what we need to do with it. Uh, but we have secured and sold a lot of buildings uh, to let everyone know with all the buildings that we have sold to date, we have saved $16,000 in utility expenses a month. Uh, so that's fantastic. And I want to thank Court Barber and TR uh, from the building department for their work. The T8 building is the best building we have. Uh, the pylons are uh, further apart, has a new roof, it has a sprinkler system. And this is Representative Richard Lindsay, a friend of mine who I used to room with out of Cherokee County. He contacted us, and they, he has a cotton gin in, uh, up in Cherokee County, and they need somewhere to store cotton. 
so I asked Nick Hall, who is over the depot, to find out what the going rate was square foot. We got the market rate. We offered it to him. He agreed. So we'll generate $54,000, I believe, in income. And we did this last year. So I hope it becomes an annual thing, and we're happy to take his money. That's right. Because he has it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was Can out riding around. That? There's a lot of cotton uh, yeah. fields in this area, so I can see the need for the storage. Yeah. Yes, Council. Yes, I just want to thank the Mayor, uh, Mayor Forge, for giving us a little extended time to get some items moved out of there. I know a lot of people had things in there. And yes, sir. So thank you for extending the time to get those things moved and relocated. So, Councilman Smith, I forgot about that, Councilman Smith. But, uh, so there is a printing press, uh, and some members of the community have requested it. We granted it and said, please, uh, this is a good time to move it, and we're giving them extended time to move it. Uh, we just don't have the labor force to do it, but they're they're making that happen, and we're happy for them to receive this printing press. Thank you for that. And the library has also, I believe, gotten all their stuff out. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Mayor Ford. Thank you, Councilman. Thanks, Smith. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? If not, Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Item 14 comes under the first reading. It's an ordinance authorizing conveyance of property at the Air Depot. Creek Ridge Properties LLC has offered to pay $500,000 for buildings T1 and T2. This ordinance has been presented today for first reading and the council will vote on it next week. I Item stand corrected on what I said earlier. Uh, <laughs> we'll sell two on next week. Yeah. That's right. Well, now, the pretty last soon two. it'll be yes, all sold, no, right? Sorry. That's good. We all have done a great job out there. We appreciate that. Item 15, new business. I don't think we have any today. So item 16, department reports, committees, boards. Do we have any departments that would like to report? Okay. Item 17, citizen request to speak. We have coming today Cindy Isbell with the Neely Henry Lake Association. And Ms. Isbell's topics are lake drawdown scheduled for October 2023 and the Christmas Boat Parade. And for our records, Ms. Isbell, would you give us your name and your address? Absolutely. Good morning. My name is Cindy Isbell, and I live at 526 Turrentine Avenue. And I am this, here this morning in behalf of the Neely Henry Lake Association. Just to let you know, Alabama Power will be dropping the lake October 23rd of 2023. It'll drop five feet from full pool. If you need to do any shoreline dock work, now's your time to get your permits. You can get those on Alabama Power's website and do it under shoreline permits. And the other thing is we are having our annual Christmas boat parade on December 1st at 6 o'clock. So we hope you all join us and remember the drawdown. It will go back up November 4th, 5th, and 6th. It will return to full pool. So thank you. I appreciate your time. Y'all have a good day. Tell us more about the Christmas boat parade. Does it uh, start at a certain place? And 6 go p.m. And the one in Gansden will start at Jack Ray Park. We'll rally there and come up water go under both the bridges, and then turn back around and go back to Jack Ray Park. Oh, so, Mr. President, that's the same time as the Christmas tree lighting, correct? Same night. I'm correct. asking, to be honest with you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, don't, I don't know either. Okay. John, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. Right. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> All right, item 18 is remarks by mayor and council. I know Mayor Ford and others in our administration are on their way to Washington, D.C., so yes, if, you'll, if you'll go first. So mayor I'll be Ford. quick. Uh, I want to thank everybody for passing the Gasson's first budget. I want us all to take credit. Uh, we passed the employees uh, $2 million in pay raises. Uh, I think that's something that every one of us need to be proud of. Uh, it lets us know where this council and the mayor's office stands. Uh, we support our employees. Uh, Thank you to you all. Thank you to Brett. Thank you to Brandon. Uh, yes, we did make mistakes. <laughs> I did. I'll take full credit. But Brandon, good job. We want to thank you. And we want to thank Lisa Rosser also uh, for coming to the venue and helping Brandon and helping us, uh, you know, weed through that budget. But I want to give full credit to Brandon and Brett for, for their work. Uh, 
we're going to D.C. today, and uh, as I said earlier, we're now in Congressman Rogers' uh, third congressional district after this next legislative session. Uh, we will keep Congressman Adderholt for one more year. The special proctor uh, has drawn the three plans to present uh, to the panel of judges. Uh, all three plans have us in the third, so we're in the third. Uh, that's all they got to choose from. So it's hard to be upset when you when you got a mouthful swollen when you've had work done, but I, I want to tell you something I'm really upset about and aggravated about is the work done on South 11th Street. I think we all share this concern. I went down there Sunday to meet with some residents. The contractor, I want to explain, this is an MPO project. So the uh, Department of Transportation chose the contractor. He, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this is a contractor that we've had before uh, and had some issues with. The, of course, the contractors weren't on site, but I did meet with some residents. It concerns me. I'm going to meet with them uh, and try to address this issue. I didn't start it, but I'm going to finish it. And it's disturbing to the fact that there's a lady that's on oxygen. The dust is coming up from her street, getting in her oxygen tank. It's disturbing that the houses have an inch thick of dust on their windows and on their house and on their cars. It's disturbing that one individual does not have air conditioner and has to raise her windows. And when she does, when I visited her, there's a half an inch thick dust on her kitchen counter that she can't keep clean. Uh, so this is something that we're going to address aggressively. <coughs> And I'm going to make sure that they, we get their attention. But either A, they need to expedite it, or B, there's something called a watering truck, which we have ordered to water ourselves on the weekend through public works. And if we have to do it, then we'll hold out revenue on the back end when the project's complete. So it's just something that's been going on. It seems like, I'm not sure how long, but it's something that has to be done. Now, when you complete paving, there are speeding issues. We've had speeding on the other end of South 11th, uh, and we have located the task force, the Crime Street Task Force, and we want to thank them. They have given out numerous tickets. Uh, it's not something we want to do or we're proud of doing, but we're going to slow people down during a school zone. And we've had people trying to walk to school at Gadsden City High School that live across the street, and they have given out numerous tickets. I will announce that today is the first day they gave out zero. So that's our goal is to slow people down. Uh, we had people clocked going 70 miles an hour in a school zone, and we don't thank Chief Jaggers and uh, their leadership for putting people out there and stopping this. So we will continue to patrol that area during school times and other times, but the speeding has to slow down in that area as long as the rest of the city. But uh, the South 11th is something we're really concerned with, and we'll address it. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor Ford. And safe travels to you and your team headed to Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. Good luck. Okay, we'll start, I guess, Councilwoman Latham be next. I just want to say thank you to everyone who get, uh, gave us well wishes for our 53rd birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Smith. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just want to say a quick thank you, real briefly. It's always refreshing to hear good news, and the last couple of weeks I've been hearing good things about what's going on in the community, how quickly things are being addressed. So that's why it's, it's so um, refreshing to hear from these department heads, because you get a chance to hear it from them as well as talking to us as the city council people. So just want to thank all the department heads for all your hard work. It don't go unnoticed. Thank you to this council. Mr. President, also uh, Mayor Ford and his staff. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Councilman Avery. Mr. President. <clears throat> I have a few here, so please bear with me. I won't be long, though. Uh, you are cordially invited to attend Gaston Job Corps annual Y2Y Youth Peace Parade and Fun Day this Thursday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Carver Square. Parade starts at 11 a.m. from 6th Street and Tuscaloosa Avenue. Joining us will be the Litchfield Middle School Band, Gaston City High School Titans Band, Gaston City Cheerleaders, United Way, GGHA, Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and Head Start. The city of Gaston, Rags, Mars, Shave Ice, Mr. Charlie's Snowball, the Fire Lines Den, and Alabama Ali, just to name a few. This event is to help spread awareness and take action against the use of drugs and alcohol, mental health, and violence against our youth. This event is free and open to the community. Hope to see you all there. 
Um, <clears throat> Want to uh, thank EMA and uh, with the CERT program that was out uh, at Carver Community Center. Um, uh, uh, thank you to the instructors and all of those that was involved, along with the participants that came out and and hopefully got certified um, or spent enough time there to get certified. And hope uh, well for the time that I was there, I did learn a lot, and it was a great well um, use program. So thank you to all of uh, those that participated. <clears throat> District 3 community meeting is this Thursday, September the 28th, 6 p.m. through 7.30 p.m. at Handy Chapel AME Church. That's 901 Rogers Street. And that's this Thursday, September the 28th, 6 p.m. through 7.30 p.m. <clears throat> Tuesday, September the 26th, 1922, uh, President W.G. Hardin introduced the first radio in the White House. The Lincoln Memorial was dedicated, uh, Lesser versus Garnett, a challenge to the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution allowing women the right to vote is rebuffed by the Supreme Court. Massachusetts opened all public office to women, and the Bronx construction begins on Yankee Stadium. Uh, but to the city of Gaston, primary, uh, or especially to uh, District 3, we celebrate Miss Maddie Whitehead, who turns 101 today. Uh, so, um, Ms. Maddie Whitehead, if you're listening, enjoy your day, and thank you for your many acts of service. Uh, also, to my wife on that, Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated was also formed or founded. Um, to end, I believe, my comments, I didn't do this on yesterday, uh, but the, the young ladies that stole my heart, I want to uh, wish a National Daughter's Day to Anne's and Aria. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Wilson. <coughs> yes, sir. I just want to say thank you to Chief Jagers and Heath and everybody in the engineering department and the mayor for addressing these issues on South 11th Street. As the mayor said, this is a project that's been going on for I've been sitting in this seat for five years and asking for South 11th to be uh, repaved. It's a huge project um, and it causes a lot of headaches, but um, we're getting closer and I appreciate the mayor holding the feet to the fire on the, on the contractors to get this thing done because it is incredibly um, inconvenient for and, and a safety issue, to be honest, um, with the current conditions over there. But it's all for a good cause. I mean, you look at South 11th Street over the last several years. I mean, we have this beautiful high school over there, brand new baseball and softball field at the high school, brand new tennis complex. We just built a brand new fire station and police precinct over there. Um, we've got a brand new bridge over Black Creek Parkway. You know, South 11th Street was never intended to be a major thoroughfare in this city but when 759 came along so many people started exiting off of 759 and cutting through <clears throat> South 11th and South Gadsden to get to downtown so the amount of traffic that you see on that roadway the road was never designed to handle that much traffic so it's been a real challenge to try to redesign and re-engineer that road it's taken several years as I said but we're close. Um, things get darkest before the dawn, so this is the toughest part of it, but we're, we're really close. We're closer than we've ever been to being done, so please, everybody, thank you for your continued patience as we get to the finish line on that. Um, oh, yeah, last thing, we have a public safety committee meeting today at 3 o'clock. Is that right? Three o'clock, Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, to discuss some proposed amendments to the um, the animal control ordinance that we had contemplated as a council over the last several weeks. So everyone's invited to attend that. Um, public safety meeting. Councilwoman Minatra has worked hard to do some research and come up with some proposed amendments to the resolution that we've, or the ordinance that we've already considered. Uh, so I look forward to seeing everybody there for that uh, conversation and seeing what um, Councilwoman Minatra has been able to come up with to improve this uh, legislation. So if you can make it three o'clock upstairs on the fourth floor. That's all I have, Council President. Thank you. Councilwoman Minatra. Um, I just want to let everyone know that we um, had a public um, works committee meeting this morning, and we are continuing to um, 
uh, strive to publish um, our schedule for trash and debris pickup. Um, we're soon going to be able to do that so that everyone um, can count on a specific week that they can put out on their curb any items that um, will that are not considered part of household garbage. So we just want to encourage everyone to um, be patient, work with us. Um, we want to clean up our city, and this is one step in the right direction to do that. So soon you will see a schedule. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Robinson. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. And I'm going to go on that just a little bit. I'm going to ask everybody in Knockville Falls area in District 7. I'm not going to say be patient like I've been saying for the last six, seven weeks. I'm going to say take a big, long, deep breath and just relax. It's just some lambs. I know everybody's frustrated. I'm very frustrated. Public Works is frustrated. The mayor is frustrated. We're all frustrated, but we're trying our best. We're not just sitting back and watching these, this stuff pile up in front of your houses. I, I've, I've, read, I've getting your phone calls. I'm getting your messages. I'm riding the neighborhood. I'm in close contact with Public Works. We're trying our best. They, they wake up one morning and they have four trucks down. They're trying to pick up the rest of the county, I mean, the rest of the city and their districts, because those districts got denied when the storm came through at Nakalua Falls. So they're trying to get that cleaned up. And like what Ms. Uh, Council, Councilwoman Minatra said, we're working on a new schedule that's going to work out better for everybody. We're going to have it set up to where you know when you're coming out into your district to clean it up. But I promise you, I promise you, like I've always been saying, once we get all this cleaned up and once this happens and once we get on a regular schedule, the neighborhoods will stay clean. I know it looks horrible now. I've heard it. I've heard it over and over. Like I said, I, I know Tucker Heights is in bad shape, Hilltop, Hilltop Circle, Hill, uh, 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 Church Road is horrible, Kenwood Circle, Bellevue, Monte Vista. I mean, I've ridden it, and if I, I even know in the Alabama City part of District 7, I got a phone call this morning. Uh, I know you guys are piled up, but I'm just saying, give us a little time. We're going to cleaned up, and once it's cleaned up, it's going to stay clean. Now, on, on your pamphlet that's going out, I, I'd like to say this. What's happening now is people are putting other types of debris on top of the storm debris. You, you spoke about this a few weeks ago. You can't put a broken toilet on top of tree limbs. That's just causing problems. And another thing is that the ditches aren't just for trash, garbage trash. If it can go into a garbage bag and go in your can, please do that. Don't just throw to-go boxes and milk cartons in the ditch. Put in the trash can. That's all I have. Thank you. I'm, I, I think I did that with no breath. <laughs> Let me breathe. <laughs> but well, please, you. just be patient. We're, we're coming. Promise. Thanks, Councilman Robinson. I think by far your district's really been under the gun here with the three storms that has hit in a matter of eight days. And, and I would echo, I'm in agreement with all of your comments. Uh, people, take a breath and put your household garbage in your garbage can and... Uh, and just you know be patient with the, the public works as they work to pick all it up great example today of the firemen that uh, had probably left up there maybe doing some work came back with their chainsaws and they worked for free just donating their their time there's been a lot of acts of kindness up on the mountain during this these last six or seven weeks uh, so that doesn't need to go unnoticed or or unthanked but y'all, it's just, it, it's a once in every, hopefully, a once in every hundred year situation. And we just don't have the capacity. You, you can't gear up physically with personnel and equipment to, to handle a, one, a, a once in a hundred year storm like that. You know, these loader trucks that you see with the, I call it the claw truck, I think those cost around $325,000. We have 11 of them. They all don't work at the same time but we have 11 of them. The reason they don't work at the same time, they probably have over 200,000 miles on them. We're squeezing every drop of water we can get out of all the equipment that we have. And so, of course, parts don't come in on time, and then you can't fix it on time. So please bear with our, our folks that are trying to help you, and uh, I can assure you that they want to clean up the mountain just as, just as much as you do. I'm looking at Mr. Matthews, who's over our public works department, He's probably hadn't slept in seven weeks, so uh, he and many others. And so uh, please, please bear with us. Their work is being done just as expediously as possible. I don't want it to go unnoticed that we passed today, I think, what would be, uh, Miss Iva, the city's largest budget. 
probably so, in history of the city of Gadsden that was founded in 1846. Very proud of the work that the mayor and the administration has done. Brandon, uh, Yeoman's job, you were kind of thrown into the middle of a fire and there, and, and there you go. You know, it's just uh, welcome to, welcome to the, being the director of finance, but you did a very good job. Thank you. Thank you for the, all the work you, you put in and Brett Johnson was a big part of that. All the administration and the mayor, uh, you, you know, it's not every day you deal with a $60 million budget. Maybe some of you do, but it's, it's, it's a Herculean task. There's a lot of zeros, a lot of commas, a lot of different departments. It's about that thick. It's, a, a, it's numerous, numerous details. And so thank you for what you've done, Brandon, and your leadership in that, and, and obviously to the mayor and to the administration. Uh, last but not least, Plumbers Wholesale. They're friends of mine, personal friends. but. Uh, uh, 75 years, you know, it's not often you have a business that'll stay somewhere 75 years. And uh, they've done a great job for our community. Uh, a lot of you, if you have fixtures in your house, you may or may not know it. Depends on where your contractor went, but <coughs> it, chances are it came from plumbers. So uh, they've been there on Forest Avenue for a long time. Go by Friday, get some, uh, get some food. They're going to have food and uh, probably some refreshments and so it'll be a good time to go by and say thanks and to uh, welcome them for another 75 years in, in uh, Gadsden. If there's nothing else to be brought forward, we will stand adjourned. Thank you.